Okay. So as soon as I hit change on the PC whose IP address is 192.168.1.2 and I still a specific IP address, an electronic packet gets created. That packet will have something called a source IP address, a destination IP address and various other headers would be there. I would be ignoring the other headers, that is a part of the course we will be, will be covered later. And it will also contain something called data. Some data will be there informing the other PC. Now the source IP address will be the IP address from where the packet is originating from. That is 1.2. And destination IP address is the place where the packet is going out to. 2.2. Now data. Data will contain something called ICMP. <coughs> Data will contain ICMP. ICMP stands for Internet Control Message Protocol. Now, ICMP has various messages. One is echo request. Second is echo reply. Me um, ICMP. No, message. No, ICMP. Um, um, unreachable and request send out. Okay. Okay. Unreachable. Here are four of the various messages we are concerned about when we talk about ICMP messages. Okay. Now, now the question is. So now the question is, um, I am sending a ping packet from this PC to this IP address. My, my question is, will these two computers communicate with one another? Will I get a reply? What is your answer, uh, Sanjay? Tell me. Yes, 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 absolutely. It has to be on the same network. Now we we'll understand the meaning of network, okay? We we'll understand the meaning of network. So I will go to a new topic, again covering the basics of IP addressing first. And we see the advances, advance of IP address later. We have an organization called IANA, Internet Assigned Numbering Authority. It is a body who lays down guidelines for IP addressing, domain names, MAC addresses. Yes, and we are concerned about IP addressing today. In the IP address world, we have two types of IP address. One is IP version 4, and we have today also the IP version 6 addressing. We'll talk about both. Today we're talking about the IP version 4. In IP version 4, so we are not talking about IP version 6 right now. So let me talk across here. We will be talking, that is also a part of the portion. So we have, in IP version 4, they say that an IP address is made out of four octets. So each of them is referred to as an octet. Octet 1, octet 2, octet 3, and octet 4. Four octets. Why it is referred to as an octet? Because each of these octets is made out of eight bits. So 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 bit makes one IP version 4 address. Uh, one octet, okay? So the first last bit will have 128, 64, 32, 64, so and 1. This is a very important part to remember. We will be discussing the advanced part of binary subletting on later, but today this is very important and this gives you an idea on how to calculate uh, binary. 
So if I want a value like number one in in a decimal, so now to understand this clearly, each of these values that are written here, this is a decimal number. This is a decimal number. So each of these contenders within the each point number, that is full stop, are binary decimal numbers. In order to convert this into a language that a computer understands. Uh, yeah, Sanjay, you there? Okay. Suppose you have a value called one, decimal number one. How would you convert that in a computer language? Now, here, since we already have one as a ready-made number of the value of zero, I will turn this from off to on, just, and I will read it like this, zero, 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 one is the binary equivalent of decimal number one. Suppose I want to find out what is the binary equivalent of decimal number 2. I will just hit a 1 on this 0, converting this off bit into on, and read it like this, saying 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 0 is a binary equivalent of decimal number 2. If I have, I want to, what is the binary number of decimal number 3? Now, this number is not ready made, but I can create it by adding 2 and 1 will give me a value of 3. I will read it like this. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 is the binary equivalent of decimal number 3. Suppose I want the binary equivalent of decimal number 9. Yes, Sanjay, uh, <coughs> can you tell me? Absolutely right, right, absolutely right answer. That gives you a binary equivalent of decimal number 9. Now you have some understanding of binary in this sort of break right now. We'll continue whether these two computers will communicate with one another or not. Now IP version 4 says that each IP address has four octets. And the first octet is referred to as this. This is the first octet. And any other numbers after that is irrelevant. The first octet decides which class an IP address belongs to. For example, we have got various classes of IP address in IP version 4. Class A, Class B, Class C, Class B, and Class C. These are the various classes we have in IP version 4 world. Each class says I have a specific range. For example, class A says, if any IP address has a first octet between 1 and 126, there is a condition there. He belongs to a class A. Class B says 128 to 191. No condition. Class C, uh, oh, class, oh, I'm sorry. Class C, A, B, C, B. So class A says any IP address whose first octet is anywhere between 1 and 126 is a condition, he belongs to a class A IP address. Class B says this, class C says this, class B says this, class E says this. So these are the various classes. I put an asterisk there just to uh, uh, inform that this specific IP address cannot be used on any PC to return a or loop. Now what is loop back? We will discuss that, okay? What is a loop back? Um, You will discuss what is loop back. Okay, this is a uh, reserve for loop back session. You cannot assign this IP address onto any PC. Okay, you cannot give this IP address to any PC or any router. It will not take it. It is reserved. Okay, yes. Now, 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 uh, Sanjay, can you tell me uh, this is an IP address? Which class does it belong to? 
Absolutely right. I tried to confuse you by touching on this number, but you said that this is what has to be tested with. And you attach that to C, and that's the right answer. Okay. Now, going ahead. Going ahead. And since we are able to identify which, um, uh, since we are able to identify as to which uh, um, class and IP address belongs to, now we can proceed with identifying whether these two computers will communicate with one another. Every IP address has three names constituted. One is, uh, is, is an IP address by itself. Second is referred to as the subnet mask. And third is referred to as network ID. Also referred to as subnet ID. Also referred to as prefix ID. These three means one and the same. Okay? It means one and the same. Now, we need to find the network ID or the subnet ID or the prefix ID of these IP addresses. If their network ID matches or if subnet ID matches or lastly the prefix ID matches, then they will ping. If it doesn't match, they will not communicate. You require to do something else for them to communicate. But in order to find the network ID of an IP address, in order to find the network ID of an IP address, first we need to jot down the subnet mask of the relevant IP address. Subnet mask is also laid down by IANA. They say the subnet mask of a class A IP address would be this, class B IP address would be this, Class C IP address would be this. These are reserved. These are reserved subnet masks. Now, you will find that in the world there are variations. They may type in 255255255252. Or in a class B IP address you will see 255255255.0. Why? Because again in IP address, IP version 4, there is something called a class full IP address. versus the class less IP address. Now, class less IP addresses are those IP addresses whose subnet mask is not as per the standards laid down by class A being this, class B being this, and class C being this. They have weird subnet mask. You can put a class C I mask on a class A IP address. That would refer to as a class less IP address. It does not belong to any class. And that is a major topic we have to cover in CCMA. But today, we are not talking about classless IP address. We are just purely talking about class full IP address. And that's the reason we will use the given subnet mask for every specific classes. Okay? Yes, Sanjay, are you understanding? Any questions? Yeah. Okay. So now, since we, yeah. Yes, Sanjay. Absolutely, that was the next uh, thing I was going to explain. The basic objective of a subnet mask is only to find the network ID of a specific IP address. Full stop. Once we know that there, once we know the network ID, then we know that they will communicate directly, or they need a router or whatever another device. But in order to find the network ID, you cannot find the network ID without a subnet mask. Impossible. You need the subnet mask to find the network ID of an IP address. Clear? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Now, now, then, once I give you an example, then you will be very clear. But I am happy that you ask this question. Okay. So now, uh, now, uh, Sandy, can you ask me? Can you tell me what is the subnet mask of this IP address? Absolutely, you use 255 because you said it belongs to class B and class C. So you jot this down as it is one below the other and you put a small line below to find out the network ID of the IP address. Now watch. You will associate each of these values with their respective numbers. Are you understanding? Each of these numbers. Now, uh, how do you find the network ID of an IP address? Now, since we have a subnet mask, we can blindly find out the network ID of this IP address. Wherever you have a zero in the subnet mask, you'll copy the zero as it is. 
wherever you have 2 pi pi in the sublime mask, you will copy the number from the above into the network ID section. I repeat, wherever you have a 0 in the submit mask, you will copy the 0 as it is. Wherever you have 2 pi pi, you will copy the number from the above into the network ID section. These two network IDs are not the same, therefore, they will not communicate with one another since they are having just a directly connected cable. Are you understanding? Now, let's take another example. 1.2.16.1.2 is an IP address I assign on one PC, and 1.2.16.2.2 is an IP address that I assign on another PC. My question to you is something. Will these two computers communicate one with one another? They will communicate. Why? Yes, your answer is right. Why will they communicate? Yes, you say it belongs to a class C, a class B, uh, class B. So wherever you have a zero in the subnet mask, you copy the zero as is. Wherever you have two pi pi, you will copy the number from the above into the network ID section. I repeat, wherever you have zero in the subnet mask, you will copy the zero as it is. Wherever you have two pi pi, you will copy the number from the above into the network ID section. Now. Now, let's take another example. Now, let's take another example. I have an IP address at 202.16.1.2 on one PC and 2.16.1.2 on another PC. Will these two computers communicate with one another? Why not? Their network IDs are different. Now, now did you understand why we have a submit mask? I, yes. 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 How, 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 how do you know? How do you know three octaves are never ready? But how do you know that 192 or 1.0, the three network is a network ready? How do you know three networks are never ready and not two? Which, which concept has made you? Only because of the subnet mask. Without this mask, you cannot just, uh, confirm whether it, it, this is the network ID or uh, this is the network ID. If you put up, uh, if you do, do this wrong, okay, so this becomes the network ID now. That is classless. This would be referred to as classless. That is not the topic we are considering right, right now. That is the major topic we have to cover. This is a very important topic that we have to cover later. But, but in that case, the network ID will all change. But we know that this is wrong. This is not the submit mask of this IP address. We know right now that submit mask is this. So the job of the submit mask is to find out which is the network ID. Now we know that this is the network ID only because this, we know the submit mask. The job of the submit mask is only to find out the network ID of an IP address full stop. That's it. Okay? Now, of course, uh, I, I, you, 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 uh, you may have some one person uh, think, okay, maybe something else is there. Yes, that your doubt will be clear once you have the classes IP concept. Okay, okay. So now let's let's, let's proceed now. Okay, now now let uh, let me see. Now I told you that class A, B, C, but let me inform you that we will not be assigning class B IP address or class C IP address on any PC. Never. It will not. It will not take. It is like uh, this IP address, you cannot use it. So I'll look back. Why? First of all, um, uh, this IP address is reserved for multicasting. And uh, this was reserved for future R&D, and that R&D never happened. 
Okay? Now we will discuss about what is multitasking. Now, of course, future R&D is what, what is what is future. That never happens. So what is multitasking? We'll discuss. Okay, not now. Uh, in, in five minutes. Before that, before that, if I ask, ask you, what is the range of the first octave of an IP address, what will be your answer? Country. First octave range kya hai? What will be your answer? Range. I definitely and at this range. One to one one to dash. One to what? So what is the range of the first octet? You know, you got class A the range is one to one twenty six class B to one. So what is the range of the first octet I ask you? What would be your answer? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm asking you, what is the range? Now, if somebody asks you what the range, the answer will be 1, 2, 2, 23. Then it's class A, B, or C. I don't come to, I'm not concerned whether it's communicated with one another or not. I'm not concerned whether it's class A, B, C. But I know the first octet cannot be beyond 223. Let's confirm this. Let's ask the computer this by assigning an IP address to it. Can you just complete and tell me the right answer? Okay? Uh, let me go to one of the, uh, one of the land cards here. Yeah. Land cards? Uh, you want to let me just uh, show them the spot. Move on to the other one. Here. This is the place where we normally assign IP address to a PC. I got a property. I'm going to the first octet, okay? I'm going to the first octet. I'm, I'm asking you, Sanjay, get me a, a, a number that I can assign for class D, D for David. 2, 24, okay? As soon as it is 4, read what is given up. It says 224 is not a valid entry. Means that the value between 1 and 223. Computer is saying I can't use class B and class E. I can only use 223 in the first octet. Did you understand this? That's clear now. Now class B cannot be used, class E cannot be used. Now let's ask him what are the other octets. Uh, can we use uh, 300 here? Can we use 300 here? Yes, Sanjay? I'm talking about second octet. Second octet has no conditions. First octet has a condition from 1 to 2 and 2 and 3. Fine. Second octet has no conditions. What will be your answer? Can I use 300? Absolutely. If I take 300, it says the value should be between 0 and 2, 5, 5. Let's note it down. 0, 2, 5, 5. Let's ask him about the next octet. 300 again. 3, 0, 0. Same error. 0, 2, 2, 5, 5. Let's note it down. 0, 2, 5, 5. And the last octet. Let's ask about the last octet. Let me tell you. Last octet. Even though it's allowing me to type 0, if I hit OK, it will throw me an error. The combination of IP address and 7 mask is invalid. Again, if I type the last number as 2, 5, 5, also, it will give us the same error. The combination of IP address and 7 mask is invalid. Meaning, you can only use IP address from 1 to 2, 54. Now, we need to discuss about this now. Why not 0? Why not 2, 5, 5? First of all, first of all, 0 would be considered to be the network ID. Network ID is the identity of the entire network. It's like a surname of a person. You can't use the surname in the first name column, right? So that's the reason why 0 cannot be used. Why 255 cannot be used? Why can't we use 255 here? Answer 255 is, in this case, is referred to as the broadcast ID. Now, what is broadcast ID? First of all, in IP version 4, there are three types of communication. One is unicast, multicast, 
and broadcast. Unicast, multicast, and broadcast. First of all, if I communicate to one computer only, um, if there are hundred computers in my network, and if I send a packet to only one of the hundred computers in my network, and ignoring the others, that is purely a unicast type of communication. If I send a packet to 50 or 90 of the remaining 100 computers, from the 100 computers, I send the packet to only 90 computers, ignoring the other 10. It is referred to as multicast. Multicast is yes. sending a packet to some, not all. While if I send a packet from one PC to everybody, that is referred to as broadcast. Now, there, there are various reasons why we send unicast, multicast, and broadcast. Unicast is one thing that I can explain right now. When I ping a specific IP address, it is referred to as unicast. Only this PC is supposed to give me a reply, right? Nobody else. Yes or no? Multicast is a type of communication that is sent to some. For example, if you have a new organization, and in the new organization, there are 100 computers, the brand new computers, we have no operating system installed. Out of the 100 computers, 50 computers has to be installed with Windows 10 OS, and the remaining 50, uh, the remaining 50 has to be installed with Windows 7. So I will create a server, and that server, because now installing OS on each PC is going to be difficult for the administrator going to every computer, putting the CD, booting it, it's going to be a headache for the administrator. So if there are more than 10 or 15 computers that are actually installed with the same OS, administrator will use a service on a Windows PC called WDS, Windows Deployment Services. With the help of Windows Deployment Services, what the administrator can do is, he can multicast the signal to 50 computers and tell the 50 computers, yeah, 50 computers, you will have Windows 10. So the 50 computers will boot through the network boot through the network and not through the kingdom. Normally we boot through the kingdom, no? You will use the network to boot and you will go to the WS server and ask for the operating system and the remaining 50 computers will ask for Windows 7 OS. That means we are not sending the Windows 10 OS to all the 100 computers, we are sending Windows 10 OS only to the 50 computers, not the remaining 50, right? This is a sort of a multicast communication. And in the real world example, the best example of our form, multicast would be Radio FM that we use 94.3. That customer, that company is sending sending the signal to 94.3. Not all people are tuned to this specific signal, right? Everybody who is tuned tuned to this specific signal is the customer who is multicasting and using that channel. This is the best example of, of multicast uh, uh, signal. Okay. Now, okay. Now. So we have talked about, and what about broadcast? See, um, sometime in your life you must have always, uh, um, uh, you know, been inquisitive and gone to the network ID, the network portion of the computer. Have you ever been seen, uh, what is there here? The network. What is there? Have you ever seen this part of the... Absolutely! It shows a list of all the computers. If there are 100 computers in your network, all the 100 computers will show up here. And my question is, this computer doesn't have an eye or a ear. He can't talk. How did he come to know that there are 100 computers in, your, in his neighborhood? Answer is, every computer, including him, sends a broadcast message on the network. I am PC1. My name is so and so. Please add me on your network, please. Every computer yells every five minutes to his neighbor, and this computer catches the signal and adds his name. Broadcast is a packet that is sent to everybody. It is just every computer sends a uh, broadcast message to everybody, and to send a broadcast, we use an IP address, and we use the last IP address, dot two five five. That is the reason broadcast ID cannot be used. So not, that broadcast ID is used by a PC to send information to everybody. Did you understand? Are you clear, Sandy? This is very important. Huh? Broadcast ID, the last IP address is dot two five five, is reserved by every computer to send a broadcast to its neighbor. Now, multicast, unicast, I tell you, when you send an packet to one specific PC, it is unicast. Multicast is an IP address of this range. Every 
service, for example, you have got RIP, EIDRP, OSU, they use multicast uh, signals to send information to its neighbors. You know, so we will talk about this uh, later, you know, when the one we configure, when, when we want to talk about uh, EIDRP and all that, okay? Broadcast. So, broadcast, this is not blue, think this is broadcast, okay? This is not usually. Broadcast is the last IP address of that specific name. So, if the IP address of a specific PC is 202.16.1.1, then the broadcast ID would be 202.16.1.255, and the network ID would be 202.16.1.0. The network ID and the broadcast ID cannot be used. The network ID and the broadcast ID cannot be used. That's the reason the last octet has 1, 2, 2, 5, 4. Did you understand? Going ahead. Let's go ahead. If this is, if this is uh, the range that we can use for IP address, then we can, we can, we can finalize, conclude, that a, one of the first IP addresses in the world would be this. Yes or no, Sanjay? Because I'm using the first number from every octet. The second of, second IP address would be this, third, fourth. This way, we can go all the way to 99, 101, 199, 200, and last would be 254. Yes or no? The next IP address would be 1.0.1 dot reset the last one to 1. Did you understand this one? So this would be, and suppose I type this, yes, Sunday, what would be the next IP address to this now? Tell me. Absolutely, next IP address, Sunday. Absolutely, you will remember all this that night. <laughs> okay. This is one of the toughest things. This is one of the toughest things that teach the students. Because they are unable to understand whether you have to increment this or uh, this. Sometimes you can just jump all the way there. Anyway, great. Great. Okay. Now, now since we know that um, these two computers will not come up, let me ask you one thing, uh, Sunday. Now, um, you know, um, I have made some changes in my training, so this will be good for you too. Um, 192 to 168 to 1.1 is an IP address that I append to 1 PC. So, but obvious, the subnet mask would be this, and but obvious, you will agree that the network ID would be this. If I ask you, I want a, an I, another IP address of another PC, and that should ping with this, so what you will do this, you have it, you will copy the network ID as it is, and you will reverse engineer. So, you will type it like this 1 dot something. Yes or no? Suppose I ask you, I want two computers that will not communicate with one another. You can simple. You can simple. I will copy this as this again. Two computers should not communicate. So I will change this number to something like this. Two. Right? And I will reverse engineer and bring down the IP address also for the network. These two computers will not communicate with one another. Right, Sanjay? Suppose I ask you, um, uh, yeah, 10.0.0.1, okay? Now, Sanjay, I'm giving you the remote access of my PC, okay? You continue. Press enter, Sanjay. Click and press enter. Click and press enter. Yes, yeah. complete it. I want you to find out the network ID first. I need to type, type the subnet mask. Yes. Wherever you have a zero in the subnet mask, you'll copy the zero as it is. 
Absolutely right now, sir. Now what I need to do is just to click anywhere else. Okay, one minute. Um, okay. Now I need you to. Uh, I need another IP address. Now I need another IP address um, that will help you to communicate with it. So now click in the. So I need to click uh, and type. These two computers should not communicate with one another. What would you do? The easiest method would be, uh, yeah, okay, but not communicate. Enter. Submit mark. Uh, Sanjay, this belongs to class A. Yes, and will these two computers communicate with one another? Yes. Ah, that's a modified, modified, modified. That's okay, that could be anything, that could be, easy. That, could, that could be anything, no problem. We are only concerned with the network ID. Absolutely. Getting yeah, the point, no? See, so what you should have done is, you should have just copied this as it is. And you need to see that this should be different. So just put a one here somewhere. The one here somewhere, or two, or twelve, whatever. And then reverse engineer. You're yeah, getting the point, no? Eleven dot zero dot zero dot one, whatever. Okay, let's do it again. Yes, and then I want you to um, do, a, do a class uh, C IP address. Yes, yes, perfect. Click and type. Class B, B for Bombay. Okay, okay, B, B, B. Okay, good. Good. Uh, yes, that's nice. Then do it. Wherever you have to select, copy the number from above. Okay. Now here I want you to put another idea that which should communicate with them. These two computers should communicate with each other. They are directly connected. What? Enter. No, 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 I'm going to just click here now. Click here. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. Enter, enter. Absolutely right answer. Now, you know, I want to give you a homework, okay? I want five IP addresses. Five IP addresses. Five, um, 
right? Those that work I mean for class A five, class B five, and five. Okay? Then they'll communicate, then not communicate. Okay? Next is, uh, I want to know, choose any, uh, Two of them and convert them into binary. Okay. You want to answer binary part? So one one two one three one 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 two three one two three four five six seven one two one there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this will be the homework. Okay. So we do this first and then we will continue tomorrow. Okay. See, what about time? You know, I'm, I'm at least uh, taking a break from my training. Uh, you know, uh, now. So I'm free. Since in the morning, it's fine with you.